So last time I saw you, we were in Atlantic City. Mm -hmm. I forgot the name of the hotel, but you had a, you had a boxing match, right? Yeah. They we got, uh, what was it called? Boardwalk. I was on a right on the boardwalk. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that was yeah. fun, man. How, how how did you feel? I didn't talk to you afterwards, but uh, that was your debut, right, in boxing. Yep, my pro debut. Pro debut. Yeah. Yeah. So it was like a first round knockout, I believe. First round, 58 seconds. Yeah. Seconds. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So how did yeah. you feel afterwards? Felt good. It was a relief. Um, because going into it is like, you know, you going in there with somebody trying to hurt you. You know what I'm saying? And. So there's a little anxiety, of course. And boxing is an interesting sport because if you lose, you're absorbed in a team, the team loss. But boxing, you, if I lose, it's me. Right. But if I win, I did that, right? right? So, and the nature in which one can lose, mm -hmm. you can get knocked out, humiliated, mm -hmm. beat up, knocked unconscious. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people get, get stanky leg. You know, they get hit in the legs and start doing weird stuff. Right. You know, there's a lot of, you know, you could be humiliated, you know what I mean? However, I don't even see it like that. I feel like if somebody got the balls to step in the ring, they doing something that most people would never ever do. And all the people in the world got opinions and warrior, what they would do and or why, would, but they not stepping up, doing anything. So my hat's off to anybody that, that's brave enough to hop up there and do that. So that was about, I think it was like two years ago almost now, right? It was a year, year and a half. Year and some change. Year yeah. some change. So you haven't fought since? Nah. Um, How's that? Um, well, that night, <clears throat> the one right hand that I did land, it chipped off the knuckle in my bone. I, yeah. I mean, the bone in my knuckle. So I couldn't really train right after, so I had to wait for that to heal. Wow. But I was doing a lot of running, and, and this was while I was living in Arizona. I was doing trail runs. Mm -hmm. So on a trail run, I remember this day vividly, I had some Adidas NMDs or whatever. They weren't running shoes, but I was like, this is what I got. Some told me to go home and get my shoes. I didn't, but that same day, I hit a rock and broke my big toe. Oh, so I had two injuries back to back. Crazy, wow. But then I got, I got good and um, just been busy. You know, uh, I sold one of my companies last year. Sure. So I was, I'm so out for, I sold that, so right and came back to California to go hard with Ambrosia. And I've just been so busy with that. However, I am working on a firefight deal in United Kingdom with a really dope company out there. So, because I promoted that fight, so it wasn't fun. You know I mean? I just want to train and fight. I don't want to worry about the business, but I wanted to get paid. If I'm gonna put myself on the line, and I got paid because I promoted it, right? So, uh, I want a situation to where I get paid good money, and I just have to worry about the fight and promoting the fight, not all the business. Because that shit, it sucks. It's not fun. It's not fun promoting and fighting. Mm -hmm. So what kind of, did you hear any criticism by yourself after that first fight? Did you hear what kind of, what kind of well, not of criticism, but what kind of feedback did you hear about after the fight? Um, from the actually, fans, from the I critics? I a lot of love, especially in, you know, um, I was in Australia after that. I was in the United Kingdom. I was in a lot of places around the world and everybody was talking about it. It's funny, it was so many people talking about it, but I feel like it didn't like go viral online or nothing. You know what I'm saying? A few hundred thousand, but I got a lot of love for that. A lot of love. Um, I talked to a lot of boxers, um, good dudes who aren't getting to the money and they're like, yo, how can I do that? So, you know, I'm showing these guys, like, listen, take your destiny in your own hands. I know it's hard, but listen, you build your, boxing is entertainment. You know what I mean? Absolutely. It's not just a sport that you're passionate about. It's called prize fighting. You're doing it for pride, for money. You know what I mean? So make your money, but you have to adapt to today's times. I mean, look, we got KSI and Logan Paul about to fight. You know what I'm saying? Right, so, so. These guys are not boxers, but they're boxing and they're about to make millions of dollars because they built the platform and nobody in boxing is hating on it. It is what it is. So, so I'm telling guys, look, look, build up a platform. Like I'm not on a, a level as KSI or Logan Paul, but you know, I cleared six figures for my first pro fight, but I put up the money to promote everything. And you know, it was a gamble. I, I, I gambled on myself and I have the people follow me to support, to buy the pay-per-view. So just trying to show guys, look, you can do it yourself. You don't need some gatekeeper. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I never even collected the money I made from the fight, like the gate. 
I just took my pay-per-view money. I was good. I was good. <laughs> you know what I mean? So the fact that okay, KSI and Logan Paul are fighting right now, um, what does it tell you about the state of boxing, current state of boxing in general? How do you feel? Or how do you feel about the state of boxing at the moment? I think it's thriving. It's strong. The it's fact that we, strong. yeah, the fact that we have people who are not boxers wanting to box is so popular. And see, here's the thing: people that don't follow boxing will say boxing is falling off, boxing is dead. But here's the reality of it: I can say that about tennis. I don't watch tennis. I'm not tuned into it at all, right? So this is to show you that boxing is not going anywhere. It's, it's been strong. Um, boxing, until we had primetime TV years ago, but it went away. So we didn't get primetime TV again until about two years ago. HBO year. just went away from it? Yeah, but they were fading away anyway because of prom the promoters that they was aligning themselves with. Mm -hmm. But Showtime is killing it. PBC is killing it. So, primetime TV, ESPN, Fox, these channels, without having any of that, boxing was the number one revenue generating sport in the world. There's guys that I know that are not champions, they're not journeymen, but may have fought for a title at some point, got a little buzz behind their name, locked in at $3 million a fight that you would never hear about, that you've never heard of if you're a casual fan. You know what I'm saying? Three million dollars a fight. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about low level, not low level, but mid level guys. You know, so it's just a very lucrative sport, man. You know, and it can't be lucrative if people wasn't paying to watch it. So with Logan Paul and KSI, that, that that's a huge indication that people is, and it's exciting to watch. It's a gladiator sport, right? And it's two men standing toe to toe, right? Who's better? You know what I'm saying? So it's it's exciting. It's it's drama. Um, you know, it gets when you're watch if you're rooting for somebody, you feel like you're in their fight. You're nervous like you're fighting. You know what I mean? And if your guy loses, you're crying right along with him. That's how dope it is. So um, yeah, it's 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 strong. It's powerful. I'm in I'm in the thick of it, so I see it. But there's people on the outside that you know don't really watch it, they'll say, oh, boxing is there. It's far from it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is it difficult to sell a fight? I mean, especially these days, because there's so much content out there, right? And to sell a fight, you need some kind of, I won't say controversy, right? But you need, you need a strong, you know what I mean? That intro, that, that press conference, and you need a kind of a rivalry to build it up a little bit, right? Like, is, is that a difficult aspect to selling a fight? I'm a big fan of rivalries. You know, I want to see drama. It just makes you more intrigued. You know, when guys is being nice to each other, I'm like, I'm not into that. I don't, uh, they respect each other too much. My father always taught me, you don't respect your guy until after the fight. There's no high-fiving in between rounds, none of that. There's no respect until after the fight. Listen, after the fight, these guys are best friends because they just made each other millionaires. You know what I'm saying? They just made a lot of money with each other. They're thanking each other. I'm serious. Conor McGregor and Floyd Mayweather partied after that fight. Uh, Floyd bought a, a, another house in L.A., and it's a picture in one of the rooms, a huge picture of him on one side and, and, and McGregor on the other side. Those guys ain't enemies. This is entertainment. But is it difficult for, like, for you as somebody who's a promoter and also a fighter for you to create that environment of the intrigue, you know what I'm saying, and that rivalry before the actual fight? Nah, I think these good, there's some good promoters out there, um, good managers like Al Heyman, um, Eddie well, well, for you, For you, when you were doing oh, your for fight? Me? For you, yeah, it's a, it's a difficult process for you. I mean, I'm not really trying to do it like that. So, I mean, I got businesses that I run. If I was, if I didn't have what I had, I would be all in with boxing. But the fact that I have, you know, multi-million dollar businesses, plural, and launching more, and I got so much going on, I'm not as pressed as the, the next guy to make a buck from boxing. I love boxing, but I'm not gonna do it for free. So I'm leveraging, you know, my my status with, with certain companies to see what they could bring to the table and yeah because a lot of people think oh he's buff he's swole he can't punch he can't okay right, right. then beat me up <laughs> have your fighters beat me up right. so that's going to generate a lot of intrigue and i get a lot of hate i'm in shape you know they don't want to see that you know what i mean so that that alone brings intrigue how you feel about uh recently there's been a lot of not controversy but like, you hear people talk like uh in a heavyweight division a lot of guys are sort of shape. 
that some people watch the fight and like, what's happening? You know what I mean? Obviously, muscle and fighting is two separate things. Like mm -hmm. one doesn't go with the other. You know. But you, have you heard criticism? I forgot the guy's name, but he was getting a lot of flag because he was oh, sort of shape. Andy Ruiz. I believe so. Yeah, he was sort of shape. They don't know. He's not a model. He's a fighter. Right. He's a fighter. He's a heavyweight. He doesn't have to monitor his weight. That guy has a, a gas tank out as well. He, he doesn't fighter. fall out. He doesn't get tired. Uh, this guy's bigger than him. Um, a friend of mine, Big Baby, uh, Big ba uh, Big Baby. He's 300 something pounds. He punches nonstop for 12 rounds. That's crazy. You but he doesn't look in shape. He doesn't look, you, if you see him, you wouldn't see To me, I, I see it different. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, if you're looking for bodybuilding shape, yeah, I guess. But bodybuilders are not in shape. Mm -hmm. Show me a bodybuilder that can run three miles. You know what I'm saying? Consistently a day. Right. You know what I mean? Or do laps in a pool. You know what I mean? So it's all about what sport, you know, that is relative to the sport. These guys are very much so in shape. Mm -hmm. That level of, of, of a fighter is in impeccable shape. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They have a gas tank out of this world. They have to be to be at that level. Right. I, I'm, not in that, I'm not in shape like Andy Ruiz Jr. You see him, Chubby, all of that stuff. He can go, he can do 12 rounds. I can't do 12 rounds. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So he's in a lot better shape than me. Because right. to me, that counts. Muscles is cool, but to not get tired, to have that 12-round endurance, that's major. It's like muscle versus performance, right? It's kind of like... Well, it's a happy, it, it can be a happy medium. It's just harder for the muscular guys, you know what I mean? And it can happen. You know, people think it can't happen. I mean, people see when, I, when, I, when they see clips of me boxing or hitting the mitts or sparring, I'm very agile, you know? I do yoga, I swim, and I've been boxing since before I had a muscle on my body, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So. I know how to punch, leverage my weight behind the shots. The muscle actually gives me an advantage because now I have a little bit more explosiveness and more power, right? However, if you're muscular already and you start learning how to box, it's not, it looks terrible. And these guys can't, they don't have the concept of leveraging their body behind shots. So that muscle is just, is not really gonna help. It's gonna tire you out. Um, but we had guys like uh, Ike Ayabuchi, in the 90s, early 2000s, heavyweight, he looked like a bodybuilder. This dude was phenomenal, mm -hmm. never got tired. Evander Holyfield was being trained by Lee Haney. Mm -hmm. He looked like, he looked amazing. Mm -hmm. Gas tank out of this world, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. These guys were already boxers. They got buff and their training is harder, don't get it wrong. They gotta really get conditioned to be able to carry that muscle, mm -hmm. but they become more explosive and more powerful and they look intimidating as well, you know? so. So yeah, but but people that don't know, they just don't know. You know what for I mean? Sure, for sure. People talk so much. Shit. It's just bizarre to me. It's like people got all these opinions and facts, personal truths, but you don't know. Just find out. Google. Ask somebody. You know what I mean? Somebody uh, on one of my videos on an ad uh, said the guy said, "Yo, he's muscular, but those guys have glass chins." I'm like, why? Like, where did that come from? What do you, and he's trying to, there, and everybody hopped on his head, so he's trying to, he's trying to defend it, right. like, with science. I'm like, that is not, that is so ridiculous, bro. Right. But people, you know, a person that's in shape to a person that's not, people fear, they hate what they feel like they can't achieve or what they haven't, what they're too lazy to achieve or what things is different. They want to talk shit. It's like, for what? It's different. That guy applied itself. Maybe you got better credit. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like, why does it matter? Like, to not and try to tear somebody down, and in public of all places, that should be embarrassing. You look like an envious person, a jealous person. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's weird. It's strange, but strange times we live in. I definitely hear you on that one. Yeah. Um, how would you? Ex how would you? A micro shit in a, in a fitness industry, right? Uh, what do you think your current identity is? Because when I first met you, it was about four years ago. You were part of the Iron Addicts crew, right? Which, which you are full life, of course, still right? Am. Then you um, started your own companies. You kind of became, um, you were still in the bodybuilding space, more or less, right? Or a fitness influencer. Then you went into boxing. Then you went into vegan, plant-based um, diet type thing, right? Um, how would you, if you me to describe what you do right now, who you are, what would be the right you know, explanation for you? I mean, the facts of what I do, well, before you met me, I already had a company. You know, I, I had started, 
I'm an entrepreneur at heart, bro. I used to be in the streets. Like my 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 previous employment, I sold drugs. It is what it is. My story's out there, you know. And not like a sack of here. It was hundreds of pounds a week. You know what I'm saying? So and that had to be operated like a business, you know. So I'm an entrepreneur at heart. Um, so once I once this starts taking off in social media, and I'm like, okay, let's do something positive here and make money. So I am an entrepreneur. Um, I'm an athlete, a hybrid athlete, whether it be a boxing, bodybuilding, powerlifting. I've done it and do it all. You know what I mean? Um, I get busy. It's a lot of a lot of people on social media they just post their pictures. They're cute. It's like, what can you do? I'm one of them active type of people, so I gotta do something. I'm always gotta do something. So um, even when and I move at my own pace, how I wanna move, when I wanna move. I don't, I'm not locked into any, oh, he's a this or he's that, so he has to act like this. And No, I do what I wanna do, you know what I mean? So, um, you know, I empower myself. There's no companies that ever came and gave me anything. So that's why you built, you built I built my, everything I got, I built literally from the ground up. No investments, no loans, no debt. Like start, my first company, my first company, I didn't break even. I made a, I made $3,000 my first month of sales. I profited $3,000 my first month of sales. Mm -hmm. That mean I did really well my first month, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it's grown ever since. So, and I sold that company since then. But um, <clears throat> I'm a businessman, you know, I'm an entrepreneur and you know, I'm an active fucking adrenaline junkie type, type of person, you know what I'm saying? And I live life to the fullest. That's why I do so much. That's why I do all that I do. Listen, one thing that I know is I'm gonna die someday. One thing I don't know is when. Tomorrow is not a thing. Yesterday's gone. I got right now, so I live that shit. I live it maxed out, 110. Responsibly, but on ten, I live on ten. For sure. Um, so I'm so Alpha was a was your clothing company or a supplement it was company? A supplement company. Supplement and you also did clothing, right? And you and you sold that completely. Correct. And now you have the new company is called uh, Pl Ambrosia. Ambrosia. Yeah. What's the difference between the two? Was the the different Ooh, vision nine, or nine day? Um, Ambrosia was the, the traditional sports nutrition, your pre workouts, fat burners, all of that stuff. Um, you know in my own growth and, and personal development and my own evolution, there are certain things I didn't want to take anymore. I didn't want to take fat burners. I didn't want to take pre-workouts. I didn't feel like I needed it. So, and um, I was really trying to optimize my health from the inside out, for real. So I didn't want to be taking, keep taking products that it's going to help me beast out in the gym, but it's tearing me down on the inside. So um, I got with my partner, Sean Tobody, my boy Mark. We was on a plane one day and we was talking. I had this concept of mental jewels. I wanted to make a nootropic. That was the best on the market, right? So this is when I had my company. Everybody had their companies. I'm making money already. So we came, we, we was like, look, what if we made a company, the literally the best company there is, like we source the highest quality ingredients. We find new ingredients. We, you know, we do all of this stuff and we do things that people really need. You know what I mean? Really optimizing health. I have products that reset your circadian rhythm. I have products that protect you from blue light and delivers magnesium to the brain, passing the blood brain barrier. I have products that is for uh, 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 organ support. You know what I mean? I have off the cuff products that nobody has. So I said, let's do this the best that we can actually do, and let's make it affordable because we can justify charging double what we charge, mm -hmm. but I wanted everybody to have this because I feel like it's important. So, and we wasn't thinking about money. It was like, let's not lose money, but we don't care about making money on this. Let's just do the dopest company. And for those who want to be like, you're yeah, right, we were already making, you know, everybody's bringing in seven figures at least a year already. Mm -hmm. So we didn't, it wasn't a money play, it was a, a just because we can, let's do the dopest shit we can do, right? Mm -hmm. So without focusing on the money, the money came. It, this, the company was doing well. It was doing numbers, especially internationally, because I wasn't really pushing it at first because I was pushing my bottom line, my other company. So um, uh, 
end of the year came, we were doing taxes, we're looking at it, I'm like, yo, yo, we really have something here. This stuff is moving. So that's when I decided to sell my other company and go all in with Ambrosia. And man, it's just been great. It's been amazing. It's been a fun ride. Right. Yeah. Is it, is it um, harder in the beginning to sell products like the way you described? Because most companies sell pre-workout for a reason, right? It's yeah. a quick sell. It's easy. Everybody, yeah. everybody wants to, right? Mm -hmm. Or, or they, they, they seem they, they want to. It's not hard for me because like, I never want to do what everybody else is doing. Never. So this is easy. This is perfect. Oh, oh I got some. Just look at my training. I do things that other people are not doing. Because I want to I create my own, I want to create my own lane, right? And that's just, it ain't even a, a create my own lane thing. It's just, that's just where I, this is just what I want to do. The thing that I do is not, is not thought out like, okay, I'm not studying the market. Like they're doing this, they're doing this. Okay, I can do this. I'm not doing that. I'm like, you know what? I feel like this is the, the thing to do and I do it. So it wasn't hard. You don't see any crazy, wild, weird marketing. My marketing is traveling to the different locations all around the world educating people on the products, why they're important, the ingredients, you know what I'm saying? And if people don't know it exists, okay, that's one thing, we introduce it, and they don't know why they need it, you break it down. Most people really want to be healthier, they want to be better. Right. So when you learn about your circadian rhythm or whatever, you're like, fuck, I need that shit, you know what I'm saying? And people want, listen bro, I did a, veg uh, a video about vegetables one day, and it went viral. That's just to go to show that people really want to be healthy. It's just that people think that people think that you got to give drama, you got to give them negative shit, you got to give this, that. That's what they want. No, they don't know what they want until it's presented to them. You know what I'm saying? So I choose to present really good things, positive things. Um, and when it comes to products and supplements, it's going to be things that's really, you can't, you can line, I have so much confidence in my shit. We can go anywhere, you know what I'm saying? And I stand it up against anybody's stuff. Wow. You know what I'm saying? And it's plant, it's, is it mostly plant-based? Yeah, yeah. I have the, the top plant-based uh, protein on the market. You know, it, I've been doing plant-based protein since before I dropped meat, years ago, right? So it's not like I'm hopping on some bandwagon. I've been doing this before it was popular, right? And here's the thing, for the know-it-alls out there, oh, they tried to say, when I first dropped meat, they're like, oh, he's doing this to make money. I'm like, bro, there's not many vegans in the world. I'm not marketing the vegans. You know what I'm saying? I, when I came out, uh, the vegan people, they wanted to interview me, this and the third. I was like, look, this is not, I'm doing this for, for selfish reasons, not like the ethical reasons that are vegan. You know what I'm saying? Right. This is for me, for my health. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not trying to play that card at all. This is what I feel like I needed to do at this point in my life, you know what I'm saying? To get healthier and it, and it worked. So <clears throat> our protein, Planta, listen, just to show you that this is for real, you pick any company, they may have two or three flavors. I have 12, 12. And protein is not a money maker is and vegan protein is even more expensive than whey to make so the margins suck it's terrible but you need protein right so that's just to show you how passionate i am about this it's like it's a, i'm not preaching for people to be vegan hell i'm not vegan but here's the thing it used to be though right well i when used I, when to I eat last a time. vegan diet but when you say I'm a vegan, that's a whole lifestyle thing that I never really subscribed to. You know, no leather, you know. It's complex. So it's like it's no animal is, product at all. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just like, I, can't, I'm, I don't want to live like that. You know what I mean? So, um, not saying at some point I wouldn't do that, but I never, I've never spent any time doing research on animal cruelty. Are you on a vegan diet right now or you stopped? Nah, I'm not. Uh, I stopped this year. I introduced uh, like salmon and fish back into my diet, but it's not a lot. Were you lacking something you feel like, vitamin wise? No, 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 I wasn't. You know, I have the supplementation to, to get what I don't, didn't have from meat in an abundance, but um, it was just not convenient for me when I was on the road. I was finding it to hard to, stay, for food, to yeah. stay satiated right. when at home, I know exactly, I have all my stuff at home. Yeah. This is a lot easier. I travel so much, it becomes kind of difficult. I had a rumor, I don't know if it's true now, but a lot of people that get into vegetarianism or veganism, they quit after, let's say, roughly two years. And I don't know if it's because it's inconvenient 
mm-hmm. or is it just because they're lacking something in their diet? I don't know. I didn't feel like I lacked anything. I don't look any different now than when I was no no meat. Now, granted, I lost a lot of weight in the beginning. I lost about 30, 35, 36 pounds, mm-hmm. but I needed to lose weight, you know? So, you did? oh yeah, oh yeah. I was way too heavy, bro, way too heavy. Where so, uh, I was like around 250, 248, like around there. That was way too heavy, you know? And um, mm-hmm. so, once I lost that baseline weight, I was good. Didn't lose any more weight unless I wanted to, you know what I mean? But I'm good. And you also ate once a day, I remember you told me. Mm-hmm. You still do that? I still do that. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yep. That's to me is like interesting because like, you know, you would think, I had a conversation with your mother last time because mm-hmm. I was like very surprised by that. I eat one, one meal a day. The reason I did it, well, I used to do it years ago. My father does it, right? This is who I get it from, from my father. And um, if you do any research on it, it's just really good for your body. It's healthy for you, man. Like. You gotta think, our body, like everything is, it's all these different systems in our body. And digesting food takes up a lot of your body's resources. It's just like you have, I don't know, a Ferrari Enzo. There's no radio, there's no electric right. windows. It's all based on power, on performance. Once you have air conditioning, that takes up 15, 20% of the, that car's resources. You turn that on, you know what I mean? So it's the same with our body. If I'm digesting food constantly all throughout the day, I'm, I might be a little bit more sluggish. I was more sluggish when I ate more. Um, you know, it's just an inefficient use of my body's resources for me. You know, and it gives your body, um, I don't preach one meal a day on people because a lot of guys that follow me are young guys and they wanna get big. So I'm like, you're not gonna get big like this, right? But I'm already, I was already big and I wanted to come down. But I do preach intermittent fasting on people because giving yourself that long fasting window is just really good for your body. What is it exactly? Intermittent fasting is when you're giving yourself a long fasting window. So basically, say you have dinner, whatever time, nine o'clock, you wouldn't eat again until at least, you know, one, two, three o'clock the next day. And then again, wait till nine, so twice. Well, you have, no, you can eat however many times you want, however you want to design it. Um, within a, a, a time time frame, you know? So a lot of damage can be done within a few hours, but at least you're giving yourself a long fasting mm-hmm. window to let your body cleanse itself out, right? Um, you're not spiking your insulin. That's how people become insulin resistant and get diabetes, we eat too much. That's the, diabetes and cardiac, cardiac heart disease is the number one killers in this country. Is over cigarettes, is over car accidents, is over alcohol, is over murder. Shit that we doing to ourselves, eating. You know what I'm saying? Too much. That's crazy. So I wanted to mitigate that within myself. And also I was like, I gotta go all in with what I was doing. Um, I knew I needed to fix my diet. So I'm like, I'm gonna go hard and just go one meal a day. <laughs> Discipline, you know what I mean? And it worked for you. It worked, I'm still doing it. You, you know, the first, few days is rough, but then once your body adjusts, you good. Mm-hmm. When I eat more than once, I'm not, I don't feel that good, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. For sure. So, yeah. So, Arnold Schwarzenegger recently made some comments about veganism. He mm-hmm. preaches veganism now. He made a documentary with some other people yeah, I saw it. about the vegan lifestyle, mm-hmm. and he, he, he got a lot of uh, resentment from the bodybuilding community mm-hmm. because people are just like outraged by his comments. Um, what did you take from that, from the comments he made and from the movie that he made? I think people should stop reacting <laughs> so fast. It's like, geez, guys, this guy is an old man and he's trying to extend his life as long as he can. He's trying to squeeze out every day he can. That is a way to do it, you know what I mean? He's not getting ready for the Olympia. I'm sure he's not telling anybody, any young up and coming bodybuilders, you gotta be a vegan, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, people are just, people are so emotionally connected to everything. People are so offended by everything. And they comment immediately. Yeah, just, somebody say something, they comment. They don't even think about it, you know, and it's negative It's like, bro, think about, think, maybe think about his reasons, you know what I'm saying? Watch the documentary, do some research, do research, you know what I mean? And don't just research things that already support what you feel, you know what I mean? That's look, look on the other side, right? Yeah. Look on, look, objectively look at every angle, you know, but people don't want to do that. But f- them, you know what I mean? Um, he, Arnold also made a couple of comments 
early in the year um, about that he thinks bodybuilding should be tested for steroids going forward mm -hmm. and basically become a drug tested sport going, you know, in the future. Uh -huh. Uh, again, he caught a lot of flack for that. Yeah. You know, people outraged to call him a hypocrite because mm -hmm. he did it when he was right, compete. Right. So, uh, have you heard those comments that he made? Yeah, that's a weird comment. I didn't hear him say it, but I heard that he said it. Right, right. And if he did, that's strange. I don't want bodybuilding to be drug tested. You don't? No, like, I don't want to see somebody on the Olympia stage. First of all, I don't want to fly across the country, spend all of this money on this event to see guys that I'm bigger than. Nah, I want to see freaks, you know what I'm saying? I want to see greatness for that sport, you know. Listen, I, I don't, I don't agree with that, you know. I don't agree with that. Listen, these guys like Arnold, he's he's up there in age. He's had his period of doing whatever he did, and then he stopped. Or maybe he's still on. You know what I mean? When you're older, you should be on HRT. But here's the thing, like, there's so much information out nowadays. These guys can do this safe you know what i'm saying um when people ask me yo i want to do this i'm like it's usually young they're like get the fuck out of here no you're 19 you're 20 you're not even fully developed yet you know what i mean you and and i tell people when you become if you do have a, a low testosterone and you have all of the symptoms you should go see an endocrinologist see a doctor and have it prescribed. But it's to bring right it to way. the normal levels you're talking uh -huh. about. You're talking about to bring it to normal levels, the testosterone. Yeah, but most people are are operating. I have friends who are 250, look look great, may not feel the best, with low testosterone. You know what I'm saying? People you probably think is on gear and they're not, right? Mm -hmm. If they brought their shit up to, to normal, they're gonna look fucking phenomenal. They're gonna look even better because here's the thing: testosterone is not the end all to people being jacked and being in shape and all of that shit. Your lifestyle, how you're eating, how you're resting, how you're training, that's the end all. The testosterone is gonna knock it up, you know what I'm saying? So there's plenty of people with low testosterone that looks fucking good. I, I know these people, you know what I mean? So I know, and I know that um, I have really close friends. We all go get blood tests. That's a thing in my circle. We, because that's the only way to really know how healthy you are. That's why I changed my diet when I did because that was the first time I got blood, my blood test, a complete blood panel, and my shit wasn't that good. It was based on my, my eating. I was eating way too much food and I was too heavy. So, but I felt fine for, for the most part, looked great, but you don't know if something, if you're not getting blood tests done, blood work done, you don't know if something's wrong until it's too late. Really bad pain and you gotta go do this and do that and go to the hospital like, yo, what's wrong with me? You could be checking that you know, and be preemptive. Right. But back to, to that, that issue, um, I don't think bodybuilding should be drug tested. It wouldn't be as dope. Like, that's right. amazing. Like, I have no, I have no desire to be as big as Phil Heath or Kai Green, mm -hmm. but I love watching it as a sport. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, every year there's like a debate, why is bodybuilding not becoming mainstream sport? You know, I'm sure you heard that before. People say, mm -hmm. why is it not happening? And, one of the theories people say is because it's it's blatantly uh, steroid steroids are involved, right? Because the physiques look so big. Do you think that can be a reason why it's not becoming, or do you think listen, it's just it's boring for most people? Listen, all these sports is steroids is run rapid. I agree with you. Every now and then, guys get caught. It's okay. I think it's fine. Leave this shit the way it is. They don't need to be mainstream. What the fuck you want to be mainstream for? Just like boxing wasn't mainstream, and it's not mainstream. But if you're a boxer and you're doing well, you're making tons of money. Floyd Mayweather became a billionaire from a sport with no endorsements. So who cares? I don't care, you know what I mean? I don't, people shouldn't need or want approval from the mainstream, fuck that shit. If people want to judge, fuck people that judge. That's how I see it. Cause I don't judge nobody, you know what I mean? Hey, live your life, just don't bother me. People could, should be able to do whatever they want to do as long as it doesn't hurt other people. You know what I'm saying? You're not infringing on, uh, uh, on other people's rights or freedoms mm -hmm. or, or happiness or peace. But let people do what they want to do. Who cares? I don't I personally don't care. But as a fan, I don't want to see it. I, I wouldn't go to a drug tested bodybuilding show because I don't want to be bigger than the, <laughs> the guys. You know what I'm saying? 
So how do you feel about people that say, well, back in the uh, 80s or 90s, there used to be beautiful physiques, and now they look terrible. You, have you heard that before? I don't think, I don't think they look terrible. But, you, but you've heard that argument. Yeah, uh, whatever. They look great. They look cool. It's some, some guys just look weird, but it's shoes like that back in the day too. But they look, for the most part, I think it looks great. For bodybuilding, it looks great. I'm, listen, bro, I'm cool with it. I think it's cool. It's fine. There's a certain style of bodybuilding, of a physique that I, I, I would pick to win, but that's about it. I have preferences on who I think should win and shit like that, but I think it's fine. They look, these guys are fucking freaks. It's very impressive to be 250, 260, and no body fat. It's very temporary, but it's a wow factor to it. You take that away, that shit's gonna, bodybuilding's gone. Because men's physique you would not be able to put me on a, on a record. Take away steroids from bodybuilding and all of the, because you mentioned men's physique, because they're doing it, they're doing just as much, if not more, then the, the sport is all gone. It's not gonna be cool anymore. But, but also the, the lower divisions are not gonna be able to carry the sport without the... But no, if it's gone, it's all gone. Complete, completely gone. You think the lower divisions are not taking the steroids? No, I'm sure they, I'm sure they, they are. Take they're taking a lot. It's just they don't eat as much as the big guys. Look, steroids don't make you big. <laughs> Food makes you big, okay? Right. There may be some compounds that help you with your appetite. Right. The way you train will increase your appetite, of course. But those guys, it's a job, bro. It's a job to eat. That's part of their job. You ask any of the top guys, a lot of them are my friends, what are you most looking forward to when you retire? They say, stop eating so much. I can't stand it, I'm dead ass, bro. Yeah. That's what makes people, yo, food makes you big, not steroids, you know what I mean? Steroids helps you recover, it does certain things, it's so many, do your research, people don't research, you know what I mean? And I, I, I was ignorant to it years ago, you know what I mean? I used to think anybody with abs and veins was on steroids until I did my first like real diet. <laughs> like two weeks in, I had abs and, and veins, I was like, oh, Okay, it's the diet, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So there's a level that you won't get to without steroids, but people that wanna do that, they should do it. If they're not doing it through a doctor, they, they have to know that they're breaking the law, and if they can get away with it, do what you do, it's your risk. If you go to jail, it doesn't affect me, you know what I'm saying? So. How do you feel about um, social media personalities out there that uh, openly talk about steroids, I guess the various gurus and just people that, um, you know, like Rich Piana used to be on that level, but even even way more than Rich Piana used to be. They openly show steroids, they show the injections, they claim that they give the right advice and they're actually experimenting a lot on themselves. Um, how do you feel about those type of personalities? Mm, I don't know. I never really thought about it, but for the first, first and foremost, when people ask me, yo, do I, should I? I always say, look, you need to, don't ask me, ask the doctor. I advocate people doing it the right way. And I'm against guys doing it, young guys doing it. You know what I mean? Listen, unless you really have dreams and aspirations of being on the Olympia, that's your dream, I guess you gotta do what you gotta do, right? But be realistic about it, you know? But I'm a, like, so if guys is doing it on camera, that shit is strange. People gotta just be careful, you know what I mean? I guess it ain't that strange because there's people doing every medical thing you could think of you could find on YouTube, you know what I mean? So I guess it ain't that strange, I don't know. But um, to each his own, you know? Listen, this is, this is my thing, bro. Like, we're all essentially animals, right? We have a bigger and more complex brain than our primate cousins, okay? but we're still animals and there's certain laws and rules that we all abide by and that we're all gonna default to. And one of those is survival of the fit, right? Mm -hmm. So if somebody is impressionable enough, maybe their upbringing didn't insulate them with enough intelligence and they're impressionable enough to do what they see everything on YouTube and start injecting themselves like whatever guy did and they fuck themselves up, it is what it is. Some, you know, it is what it is. People die all the time. Like, I hate to sound heartless about it, but I can't. You can't save everybody. People are gonna do dumb shit. 
Do you, you, know you think YouTube should ban those personalities that do show that type of stuff? Nah, I don't think so. I mean, well, I know that they have rules and guidelines, and I think doing anything illegal will get you shut down. And if these guys don't have prescriptions and not doing it the right way, then yeah, but I'm pretty sure anybody showing themselves doing it, they probably have a prescription. I haven't seen any of those videos because I, I just don't watch that kind of shit. Right. <laughs> but um, I would assume that, but I don't know. But it's a lot of dumb people, you know what I mean? That do illegal things on camera. So they get popped. Like, it's, that was stupid. That was really dumb. But I do think it's, I think it's kind of, um, let me bring it back a little bit because I don't want people thinking that I don't give a fuck about the people that watch content, because I do. And I, I show that with my actions. So there's a lot of things that you can do, you can influence people to do, right? You can show them you taking steroids and influence them to take steroids like you do and all that, right? I choose to influence people to do really cool things. Like once a month, and I've been doing this for years, I have a, an organization called Dirty Angels. And what I do is I'm in a different city, I do a call to action like, yo, y'all wanna come hang with me? I need your help with something. We're gonna go out in the streets in your city and we're gonna feed people. After that, I'm gonna take everybody out to eat. We're gonna break bread and chill, right? When these people, I've been doing it for a long time and I got a really, my very first time doing it, it was like, I felt so good about what I was doing, right? So I wanted other people to experience that. And these people afford me a really good life. They support me, they buy my products, this, that, and the third. So I feel like I owe it to them to give them the best that I can give them. And that's not gonna be me giving them stupid advice about this, that, and the third. I give them very, to the best advice that I can give them, right? The safest advice I can give them. And when I'm mobilizing them, I'm mobilizing them to come out with me into the streets to go help people who nobody helps, who society don't even know exists. You know what I'm saying? So, and what I'm doing, I tell them each time we go out, I say, look, this is not eradicating homelessness. You know what I mean? But what this is doing is planting a seed in y'all to have a service, have a spirit of service and doing things for other people when you're not gonna get anything back. You know what I mean? I appreciate y'all for sacrificing your Saturday nights, not getting lit. Y'all out here with, with, with your boy and we out there feeding people. Fearless, we out in the, we in the slums. We go to the slums, the bottom of the bottom, right? Message. It's a good message. It gives them a sense of empowerment and they feel good about themselves. You know what I mean? And that seed is planted for them. So they can go do that with their crew, with their squad, or their family. You know what I mean? So me and my son do it. You know what I mean? So um, that's what I choose to do. So I do care about these people that, that watch at least my shit. Mm -hmm. But look, if that's what you want to do, that's stupid, but it's on you. you know what I mean? Since we're on the subject matter, um, how do you feel about the fitness bloggers um, I guess some call it media, but mostly it's bloggers, you know, people with YouTube channels that are not bodybuilders, but that within the fitness industry. And do you think they promote negativity or do you think they just have to do what they have to do to survive as, as media people? I think there are people, there are people who, uh, that I don't, don't agree with the type of content that they do when it's nothing to do with them and it's all other people's shortcomings or what they feel like they can expose or none of these people are fucking authorities of anything. Right. Nobody owes them a fucking interview or a conversation. Right. You know what I mean? And uh, But they get the views, they get the they attention. They get views right? because it's drama. It's, it's, you know, people are attracted to negative, to sensationalize, you know? is very short-sighted. There's no legacy in that. There's no long-term anything in that. What do you do when you can't find any drama? What do you start doing? You know what I mean? We, we, nobody's story is juicy enough for you. You know what I mean? And I feel like at some point, these people might look at themselves in the mirror like, yo, what am I doing? I'm making a living off of other people's misery and sadness. It has nothing to do with my talent, with my hard work. I'm just getting the juicy scoop. I'm a drama queen, you know what I mean? So, um, and they may be running up on people who, listen, 
with me, somebody put out the wrong. You had altercation recently, right? Somebody, somebody put out the wrong shit with me. They're gonna have to deal with me. That was an altercation, right? It was an uh, expo, I believe. There was there. Listen, I don't put my life out there. I don't like discussing drama or anything like that involving me. But um, because my life is real, you know what I'm saying. I got a lot of people that love me and care about me. That they hear the wrong things, they may do some things to some people. And look, it is what it is. You know, there's a uh, actions, reactions. Um, I'm gonna do things to people if that kind of, because that's just who I am. I'm a man. Like, you just don't play with me like that. I don't do that. I don't do. I don't play with nobody. I don't say bad things about people. I don't, you can't find one piece of content of me shitting on anybody. And if I have a problem with somebody, I'm gonna talk to them directly. You know, and people are so scared to talk and so afraid of confrontation. I love confrontation. And it's not like fighting. Like just because there's a confrontation doesn't mean there's violence. I don't love violence at all, right? However, if there's an issue, we gotta deal with it. We gotta talk. We gotta talk about this. That's what men do. You know what I mean? Because I'm not gonna be in uh, an environment with people, and the shit is off, and we're acting like this all it's all good. I can't live like that. I don't do that. So, so yeah. I guess these people haven't been punched in the face yet. <laughs> you know what I mean? A lot of these guys are scared. I don't know what it is. These guys are scared they lose their sponsorship. I don't know. But I'm my own boss. You know what I'm saying? So. I'm not afraid of nothing. Do you, do you think it's better for you to, like I say, if somebody does talk about you negatively, do you think it's better just to ignore it because otherwise you fuel more content publicity for them? Well, first of all, I'm not gonna do anything public. It's not, I'm not gonna do a video. <laughs> if I do a video, if I do a video, it's gonna be like, because this. here's another thing, a lot of people like me. Anytime there's an issue with somebody, people are sending me all the scoop on this person, these people. I got so much dirt on people. It's some grimy people out there. So, I'll, you know, when people talk about exposing, exposing, some real exposing would get done if I was to go that route. But I'm not going that route. Right. You know what I mean? But I will deal with those people. And I'm not trying to, people, people get so, oh, he's trying to be a tough guy. I'm not. I'm not trying to be a tough guy. <laughs> I'm not a tough guy. I'm a, I'm a fucking uh, uh, a dad. You know what I mean? I'm a loving guy. I'm a dog lover. You know what I'm saying? But I'm, I'm a man. And if you're trying to make me look bad, especially in the shit ain't ever true or sensationalized, I have to, you have to see me. You have to look me in my eyes and we're going to have a conversation. And it might be uncomfortable for you. That's it. And I feel like any man should do that. Any man should carry yourself like that. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, people are so scared of, oh, we're talking, let's talk. That's it. I agree with you. Do you still see the value uh, for your business to attend uh, bodybuilding expos um, around the country? Because I saw some statistics from last year and the year before, and they were steadily declining, actually, and mm -hmm. across the board. Right. Um, do you still see value of going there and being around? I like it? going to some of the expos. So, yeah, I mean, it's not making or breaking my business. You know, I, I don't have to go to an expo, but I like to go to expos. I enjoy them. The big ones I enjoy. There's certain small ones I enjoy too, just to be able to really vibe with the people. But I like I like being in different communities, different cities, touching the people, letting the people see I'm real. I'm I'm here with y'all. I'm here. You know, I'm not bigger than y'all. I'm not above y'all. You know, I'm a regular dude. So I'm enjoying the ride. You know what I mean? As long as somebody want me at the expo, I'm a, I'm gonna show up. Would you say that social media is the most important factor for your business? Your business growth very important that's you know it shouldn't even be called social media anymore it's just media it's just media it's mainstream it's, it is what it is that's where people's attention is at uh, you have a concern that um social media platforms technically are owned by somebody else right a corporation mm -hmm. um recently there's been a few different well you know the few of them kind of went out of business like vine you know at some point yeah and then there's been some censorship on youtube right and then recently there's been some algorithm alterca um, alterations by Facebook and Instagram. Mm -hmm. When you see stuff like that, does it ever concern you? Like what's gonna happen in the future? Whatever they decide nah. to change something? No, nah, it doesn't because 
I'm actually a really good marketer. You know, this is what I do. And Facebook has been, they change frequently, you know. I get all the articles. I got people at Facebook. I got people at Google, at YouTube that I'm tight with, that I've been tight with for years. Sometimes those people will move on and then there's somebody else. But I, I, I'm really linked in with some dope people, like really good people at all the major platforms. And, you know, I, I study it. I watch it. Um, I have a, a, a team in there and we sit down and we, we, we come up with strategies and we, we have to change. When it changes, we change. When people don't evolve, they die. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The species don't evolve, it dies. So it's supposed to change. It's gonna change all the time. You know, the algorithms and whatnot, it changes because they're making a lot of money. Facebook is making a lot of money. So they gotta adjust things to keep that money coming in. You know what I'm saying? They don't really have any competition outside of Google, but that's a whole different platform, YouTube. You know what I mean? So. I love it. It's fun for me, man. It's fun because it's fun for me because it leveled the playing field. It leveled the playing field for myself with the big companies. To compete against the bigger companies. Yeah, right. For sure. So what's happening in Ethics, man? I mean, um, you know, um, is is it is it still growing? Is it like cause obviously you're doing your own thing, but you still you always be a part of it. Like you know, um, yeah. you, you came from that, but like what's yeah, going on with Iron Ethics? As, as I guess as a movement it, and also. It, um, I'm sorry. How, how how would how would you say Iron Addicts right now? Because I think at one point in bodybuilding it was different, like different groups, right? There was Five Percenters, Iron Addicts, the Strength Cartel. Like it was all these different movements going on, right? And kind of some of them started dying out a little bit. So what do you think is happening now within that within that group? And also, what do you, what do you put Iron Addicts currently within that? You know, what I mean, category. I never really looked at that. I guess that's a thing. These groups, but. Iron Addicts it was never meant to be like a group. It's just a philosophy, it's a lifestyle. You know, CT, Big Rob, those are, that's family. See, what people don't see, man, like, that's, like we talk all the time on the phone. It's not about social media, you know what I mean? Um, everybody's living their lives and trying to make the best uh, uh, life for them and their loved ones. You know, Big Rob's about to get married, you know? CT's, he's doing a lot for his family right now and spending a lot of time with his family. He went through, he almost died again, <laughs> you know what I mean? So he's been spending a lot of time with his family and just absorbing all that I love and giving that love. So everybody, but we talk all the time. Look at my family, jokes, right? On the phone, you know what I mean? I'm not gonna like uh, screen record me and him talking and put it up. It, it's goofy, you know what I mean? But there's other people in the industry that are really dope that I have really good friendships with like that, like Rob and Daniel and Bailey. We hang out more than we will ever post on, like hang out, hang out. Like Rob will come out to Miami and, and chill with me for a few days. You know what I'm saying? I go to Pennsylvania. We go out there and rent out the movie theater and hang out with our squads mm -hmm. and chill. You know what I'm saying? Um, we just had dinner the other night. Like these are, it's good people out there and I just stay tight with all the good people. Me and Jay Cutler was texting today. Jay Cutler texts me every week like, hey, hey Mikey, you good? Just checking on you. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's good people. It's not about like stunting for the gram all the time. You know what I mean? I get, I'm, I don't feel it's necessary. You know, when you've seen us all the time, it's because we all worked in the gym together. You know what I mean? You know, our relationship started 2010 and it, it was, it's real, it's pure, you know? Like an iceberg, you might see this up here, but this is way deeper down beneath the earth, beneath the surface. So that's how our relationships are. And our relationships are real. And what you see reflects reality, like where we are in life, right? So, you know, CT is 20 minutes from here. You know what I mean? Iron Axe is 20 minutes from here. Um, my reality is I'm a single father. I'm a single parent, you know what I mean? I gotta get up early in the morning. Me and my son, we go out, go to the coffee shop so he gets his little breakfast, his Danish, take him to school. I'm off to the gym, you know what I mean? Me and my business partner, we train together, hit the sauna, come up with concepts, ideas for the day. You know, shower, I'm here at the office, you know what I'm saying? Um, picking my son up at 2.30 with well, my assistant, picking him up today. But, you know, I'm, I'm, a family, I'm a family guy, you know what I mean? So I'm not spending my entire day in the gym. You know what I mean with, with the guys, and they got things that they gotta handle as well. We got family, we got things. Right, right, right. But but you know, um, but me and Rob, we train together. But he he tore his quad, so he's out for for a minute. But me and Mac Truck and me and Big Boy, 
we see each other at least once a week. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We train, we getting down, hanging out, all of that shit. So um, I'm really tight with the good, the good people out here. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But uh, there's no groups. We all come together. We just men. We all just people running our businesses, trying to have good lives. That's it. You know, sure. we're not trying to stunt like, oh, we're this clique and we're that clique. That's childish. And I guess when that was more of a thing, we were all younger, you know, it was a few years ago, but that shit is not, is okay. We, 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 we are all squad. Like I'm Iron Addicts and I'm Strength Cartel, just the same. Cause I believe in that as a philosophy, as a mind state. And those are my guys, you know what I'm saying? I'm flag nor fail. I believe in what they, what they stand for. Like we all believe in the same shit. Like I'm all of that, you know what I mean? It's just. We all, it's just like religions, right? What's the, the, the common denominator in religion? It's salvation, right? It's to get to God or whatever that is, right? You could be a Hindu, you could be Muslim, Christian, whatever. It's all different roads to get to the same place. That's it. And that's the same with all of these, I guess, groups or whatever, it's, you know, but it's just, this is just everybody's, each name for these groups are, is just other people's creative outlets you know what i'm saying all right mike so um two topics i want to ask you your opinion on so there's been some controversy recently with uh transgender athletes uh men that you know transgender into women now basically they go and they win powerlifting competitions they mm -hmm. dominate the competitions right and the controversy is that, that they should not be allowed to compete in those right because they still physically men mm -hmm. obviously it's it's a very it's it's a very um controversial topic because, you know, in the society we live in today, you know, some people are strongly think that they should be competing, some strongly think they don't. You know, you being a powerlifter yourself, I mean, when you see stuff like that, what do you think? I, I don't really have an opinion on it. I don't, I don't know. I think, I don't think it should be banned because it's hilarious when it happens. And I'm a ridiculous person, so I like ridiculous shit. Uh, I don't really know. I never put much thought into it. Um, if we can recognize, if a transgender person changes their gender and we are all recognizing that person as what they want to be identified as, then yeah, they should be a woman in a woman's meet or a man. Yeah, why not? I really don't, I don't really understand it all. I don't know all the nuances, but I don't really care. It doesn't really affect my life, you know what I mean? <laughs> Um, and the second thing I want to ask you about Sean Roden. Um, so Sean Roden, you know, was faced with accusations. Oh, Sean Roden was banned from competing in Olympia. Um, the second the news broke that he was accused of, mm -hmm. of a serious, you know, of, of rape, basically. Um, right away, Olympia said you can't compete. So the the current Mr. Olympia was not able to come back and defend his title. Um, what do you think about that? I don't think that I don't think they should have banned him from competing for one. I don't, I don't see why they did that. Cover their asses, maybe. Um, the, cr the alleged crime is heinous, it's horrible. One of the worst that can, outside of children, that's, that's number two. Of course. Um, so, I don't know, that's a tough one, man. That's a tough one, because I would have to put myself in a, in a position of the Olympia, like, yo, if this is my company, do I want this person that's, I don't know what kind of evidence is out there, you know, maybe they know something that we don't. I really don't know. I just think that it's weird that, um, you know, a crime of that nature would take so long for charges to be filed, you know, and then it was filed around the time of the Olympia. It just seems weird. It seems fishy. Um, I hope that it's not true for her sake and for his sake. It would be a horrible story. You know, uh, for the winner of the Olympia, it's cool, but you can't really be that ecstatic. You know what I mean? Because the champ wasn't there, you know? So, you know, it's one of those situations, man. It's just a weird fucking situation. What do you think, bro? Do you think they should abandon? I'll be honest with you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't have enough evidence to even answer the question because- Okay, but here's- but what we, this is what we all have. Yeah. He's brought up on charges. Yeah. Um, do you know how to do it in other sports? Like for instance, if uh, a football player gets accused of rape, do they kick him off the team or do they, I don't know. So I don't know, I don't even know either. I don't know. I, I, you know, it's just a, you know, 
if he if they let him compete and he did it, they deal with it then. They can strip his title, I guess. But um, I don't think I don't think they should abandon him. As an objective person, I don't have a horse in a race at all. I don't think they should abandon him. Yeah. Um, so do you think this year's Olympia wasn't? I guess no. it's exciting no. because of that. No. Because Mr. Wasn't. Olympia wasn't there, right? It wasn't. It right. wasn't. Yeah. There was no Phil. There's no, of course, no Kai. Sean Roden won there. You know, it was just a little lackluster. You know what I mean? I ain't gonna lie, it was lackluster. Yeah. yeah.